A few weeks after the big dust-up between Sam Altman and the OpenAI board, the company has released a new safety and preparedness policy. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today we are talking about OpenAI's new preparedness policy, and this is meant, I think, in many ways to address concerns or questions that people have had coming off of the board's firing and rehiring of Sam Altman, at least in terms of the date of its release now. However, it should note that there has been some amount of shifting in the way that OpenAI approaches this for the last few months. Basically, the way that OpenAI used to have it set up, there was a trust and safety team under someone named Dave Wilner, who was a former Meta Platforms content moderation executive. For the past few months, they've been looking for a replacement, but it seems that that strategy has shifted, and now they are thinking about safety in three different ways. This new update on their preparedness team is the fullest articulation of how they're thinking about this problem so far. They write, The study of frontier AI risks has fallen far short of what is possible and where we need to be. To address this gap and systematize our safety thinking, we are adopting the initial version of our preparedness framework. It describes OpenAI's process to track, evaluate, forecast, and protect against catastrophic risks posed by increasingly powerful models. So one of the really important things about this is that they've divided the world of safety into three different buckets. There are safety issues having to deal with current models, safety issues dealing with frontier models, and safety issues dealing with superintelligent models. Inside of OpenAI, these now all have different teams. The super alignment team is the one that we've talked the most about. This was formed over the summer and is co-led, or was co-led at least, by co-founder and chief scientist Ilya Sutskever, as well as Jan Leakey. Although as of current, no one exactly knows what Ilya's future with the company is, given the fallout of that whole board blowup. Now, the team that focuses on these current models is called the safety systems team. And in fact, earlier this month, OpenAI updated how it was approaching that in a blog post from December 5th. They wrote, Building on the many years of our practical alignment work and applied safety efforts, Safety Systems addresses emerging safety issues and develops new fundamental solutions to enable the safe deployment of our most advanced models and future AGI to make AI that is beneficial and trustworthy. Safety Systems stays closest to deployment risks, while our super alignment team focuses on aligning superintelligence and our preparedness team focuses on safety assessments for frontier models. In collaboration, these teams span a wide spectrum of technical efforts tackling AI safety challenges at OpenAI. So when it comes to these questions of deployment for current models, what are some of the problems that this team thinks about? OpenAI lists, how do we detect unknown classes of harmful answers, actions, or usage? How do we maintain user privacy while ensuring safety? How do we best leverage diverse human expertise to guide AI safety? How do we build AI to be collaborative with users and safely take action on behalf of those users? Now, within the team itself, there are actually four subteams. Safety engineering, model safety research, safety reasoning research, and human AI interaction. Safety engineering is exactly what it sounds like. It's the team that implements, as they call it, system-level mitigation into products. The model safety research team focuses on alignment with these models. The safety reasoning research team is taking a slightly different approach and thinking about how to build, quote, better safety and ethical reasoning skills into the foundation models and using these skills to enhance our moderation models. This isn't exactly the same, but this echoes Anthropic's constitutional AI, where rather than trying to scale reinforcement learning from human feedback, or RLHF, instead Anthropic is trying to teach its models to reason about appropriate or ethical use cases based on a constitution that comes from a corpus of other constitutions and important ethical documents that people have written across the centuries. The last subteam of the safety systems team is human AI interaction. The way they describe it is... Policy is the interface for aligning model behavior with desired human values, and we co-design policy with models and for models, and thus policies can be directly plugged into our safety systems. Now, I will say that I think OpenAI often does an admirable job of not getting caught in jargon, but that sentence literally says nothing. Anyways, on December 5th, it was a short post, but it set up this new post, which is of course more about this preparedness and the implications for frontier models. So what about the actual framework itself? There are a few dimensions of it. The first they write, we will run evaluations and continually update scorecards for our models. They write, we will evaluate all our frontier models, including at every 2x effective compute increase during training runs. We will push models to their limits. These findings will help us assess the risk of frontier models and measure the effectiveness of any proposed mitigations. Our goal is to probe the specific edges of what's unsafe to effectively mitigate the revealed risks. To track the safety level of our models, we will produce risk scorecards and detailed reports. So the four categories of risk that they define are cybersecurity, CBRN, which stands for chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear risks, persuasion, and model autonomy. These scores for any given model range from low to medium to high to critical. And ultimately, the overall model score is the highest risk score in any category, meaning that if CBRN, persuasion, and model autonomy were all low, 
but cybersecurity was critical, that would still mean that overall the model was categorized as critical. Now, of course, what does it mean to actually have risk in these categories? Well, that's the second part of their preparedness framework. They write, we will define risk thresholds that trigger baseline safety measures. We've defined thresholds for risk levels along the following initial tracked categories, cybersecurity, CBRN, persuasion, and model autonomy. Now, in terms of how they actually use these model scores, first of all, they're focused on post-mitigation scores, i.e. not what the score is before they've done anything about it, but what the score is after they've done something about it. And basically what they're committing to in this is that only models with a post-mitigation score of medium or below can be deployed, and only models with a post-mitigation score of high or below can be developed further. So what they're saying is that if they find critical threats in any of these categories, and they can't get that down to at least just a high threat level after mitigation techniques, they're saying here that they would cease work on that model. And of course, they'll only actually push out models that have a post-mitigation score of medium. Now, who is making the decisions about all these things? Well, that gets to the next part of this framework. And this is the one that's certainly been picked up the most by the press. OpenAI writes, We will establish a dedicated team to oversee technical work and an operational structure for safety decision-making. The preparedness team will drive technical work to examine the limits of frontier model capabilities, run evaluations, and synthesize reports. This technical work is critical to inform OpenAI's decision-making for safe model development and deployment. So basically, the job of the preparedness team is to do all of the legwork that gets people the information they need to make decisions. That is this preparedness team. But on top of that, they're also creating a cross-functional safety advisory group to, quote, review all reports and send them concurrently to leadership and the board of directors. While leadership is the decision-maker, the board of directors holds the right to reverse decisions. So basically, there are four groups, each with a different role. The preparedness team does the technical work to assess things. The safety advisory group makes recommendations. Leadership makes decisions about whether to deploy or continue working. And the board of directors has the right to reverse those decisions. Now, the relationship then between the leadership and the board of directors makes it kind of make sense why they're having this third-party safety advisory group there as well. The safety advisory group effectively acts as a nominally impartial layer on top of the preparedness team, where both sets of decision makers, the leadership and then the potential reverse decisioning board of directors, have that same set of recommendations and have that same set of technical work underlying it from the safety advisory group and the preparedness team, respectively. Now, my assumption reading this is that when they talk about decision making, they're talking about deployment and they're talking about the continued development, basically the two things they specified in the previous section of the preparedness report but it'd be good to have that a little bit more clarified. Now, the last two notes of the preparedness framework are, we will develop protocols for added safety and outside accountability. The preparedness team will conduct regular safety drills to stress test against the pressures of our business and our own culture. Some safety issues can emerge rapidly, so we have the ability to mark urgent issues for rapid responses. And then secondly, we will help reduce other known and unknown safety risks. We will collaborate closely with external parties as well as internal teams like safety systems to track real-world misuse. We will also work with super alignment on tracking emergent misalignment risks. We are also pioneering new research in measuring how risks evolve as models scale to help forecast risks in advance, similar to our earlier success with scaling laws. Finally, we will run a continuous process to try surfacing any emerging unknown unknowns. So my thoughts about this overall are that on a basic level, the framework makes sense, right? You've got what is a coherent separation of these different types of risks into these different categories and teams, which makes sense from a focus perspective, but also does require, of course, that these teams work together well and communicate effectively. But let's assume that that can happen. The framework of risk across these four categories also makes sense to get a little bit clearer around what we're trying to identify when we're asking, should a model be deployed or should a model even continue being researched? I think what I and a lot of people would like to know although this might be proprietary and internal, is what those risk thresholds really are. What makes a cybersecurity risk move from low to medium and then medium to high and then high to critical? How is that measured? How is that determined? Same across CBRN, same across persuasion, same across model autonomy, especially because these things could get very subjective very quickly. Is there a benchmark for understanding how persuasive something is? My guess is that there are. OpenAI tends to try not to be super hand-wavy about this, but that I think is the reasonable next set of questions and something I hope we get more information on over time. Not only because OpenAI is currently at the very forefront of this industry, but because the more that they share that sort of information, the more that other people have the chance to push back on it or suggest additions or updates or changes that can actually inform how other people test their models as well. Still, it's good to have these frameworks start getting put into place, and I'll be interested to see how they evolve in the months to come. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.